One of the most common causes of a slow website are images that are just way too big and taking ages to download, slowing everything down. What can you do to handle this? Well, there's two ways you can approach it. You can make sure that the images are converted and compressed before you upload them. Perfect when you know what you're doing. But when you hand off to a client, they may have no idea whatsoever. So the second option comes in super handy. We take care of all that for them and optimize the images they either have on their website right now or what they upload in the future. To do this, we're going to use an absolutely free plugin today called Compress X. This is from the same team as behind WP Vivid Backup Pro, one of my favorite plugins, and they have sponsored this video. But as always, I'm not going to give you any opinions. I'm simply going to demonstrate how you can use the plugin. Then you can make a more informed decision for yourself if you want to try this free plugin out. There is a pro version coming, but right now at the time of releasing this video, that's still in beta. It's not available. So just bear that in mind. OK, so let's take a look at how this all works. For our example, I've created a really simple page in a native clean install of WordPress and just inserted a gallery with a bunch of unoptimized images in. This is what we have to start off with. So what I've done is I've run this through PageSpeed Insights by Google and we've got this result. As you can see, the site itself ranks pretty well because obviously there's next to nothing on it. But there are some issues with those images. If we scroll down, you can see underneath the diagnostics, we've got two red marks. Properly sized images and a bunch of savings we can get from there and to serve images in a next gen format. In other words, instead of using things like PNG and JPEG and so on, which is what these images have been uploaded in that format, we need to change them over to a more compressed format that's widely supported. For example, WebP and AVIF. Thankfully, that's exactly what Compress X does. Converts our images into either or both of those formats. So let's take a look at how we do that. So coming back into WordPress, into our plugin section, just go and search for Compress X, install and activate that plugin, and then you are good to go. So all we're going to do is we're going to jump into the settings and take a look at how we can configure things. So the settings are pretty simplistic and pretty minimal. So we don't need to worry too much about what we configure inside here, and they're mostly pretty self-explanatory. So first of all, we've got this main section at the top that allows us to specify exactly how we want everything to work. So you'll notice, first of all, we've got to enable it to convert new uploaded images. So in other words, when an image is uploaded to our media library, we want this to handle the compression automatically in the background for us. So we're going to say, absolutely, yes, turn that on, please. Then we've got the library to process your images. We've got two options. We've got GD and Imagic. These are both generally installed on most servers. But if you're not sure, you can do one of two things. You can either check the environment, which we'll take a look at right now. Or if you can't get any help there, go and ask your hosting company exactly which one is installed. Maybe both are installed, and then you can pick and choose what you prefer. So if we use the check environment option, that will check exactly what is set up on our server. And as you can see, we've got the GD extension is installed and we've got the Imagic extension. So we've got both of these. So you can pick and choose what we want to use based upon the settings that we want to pick inside Compress X. For now, let's just leave it on the GD option. That's perfectly fine for what we want. Then you can choose the output formats. You've got WebP and you've got AVIF. Now, AVIF is the newer format. This only came out slightly been adopted more widely last year. So there's slightly less browser support here. But you can handle that by using the browser compatibility. And I would recommend you take a quick look at these options. And it just basically says how things will fall back. So in other words, if AVIF isn't supported in the browsers being used, it'll fall back to WebP. If that's not supported, it'll fall back to the original format like JPEG and so on. I'm going to leave that set to say use picture tag in this example. Then we've got the compression level. So you can see we've got a bunch of different options here. By default, you'll have it set on the thumbs up, which is kind of like the safe zone. And you can absolutely leave it there if you want to. However, if you want to have less compression, so your files will still be a little bit bigger, you can choose the left arrow. And if you want to have lossless, so there's pretty much no compression applied, you can choose that. And obviously, if you go the other way, more compression is applied. However, I like to use the custom option. If we use this, you can see we can set the WebP and the AVIF values. I'm going to leave the AVIF as it is, but I always set my WebP images when I compress them personally to 75%. So that's exactly what I'm going to set inside here. We'll save and close to commit those changes. And then we've got a couple of pro only features. But like I said at the top of this video, the pro isn't currently available, and we're only going to cover the free plugin in this video. OK, so before we move on and start bulk processing, let's take a quick look at some of the general settings and what we can configure inside you and where and why and when you may want to make changes. 
So if we scroll down, we've already briefly covered the browser compatibility, and I would recommend you take a look at this and choose the one that works the best for your circumstances. However, the rest are a little bit more general and a little bit easier to kind of get your head around. So you've got do not convert PNG images. Now, PNG images can have transparent backgrounds. So if you know that you use that transparent background in various different images on your website, you may want to check this box that says do not convert those. The same thing goes for the AVIF. I'm going to leave those as they are because I'm going to be using SVG images for any kind of logo with transparent backgrounds, so I'm not too bothered. Set it as you need it. Then you've got your EXIF data. Now, when you upload an image taken on your phone and things like that, a lot of additional data that you may not see is also uploaded with it. Things like location data, date, time, those kinds of things. You may not want that information to be included in your files if someone downloads them and tries to read that EXIF data. So I would generally recommend, unless you're a photographer where you need this info to be included, to check that box to get rid of it. Then you've got your parameters for processing images. This is basically specifying how it's going to handle processing images and how many images it processes per cycle. I would recommend leaving that at its default value. Have a quick look over the information about what it does. And if you need to make changes, use that information to make sensible changes. Then you've got automatic removal of files in output formats larger than the original ones. That just basically means that if you upload an image and it converts it to AVIF or WebP and it finds that image is actually larger in file size, in other words, it goes from like 500 kilobytes to a megabyte, it will delete the AVIF and or WebP versions and leave the original image there. So you don't end up with images being converted and then being actually bigger than their source image. So I would recommend making sure that is enabled. Now, next on the setting section is the enable auto resizing of large images. Now, if you are creating a site that has a specific width or you know you don't want images to be larger than a certain width or height, you can set those values inside here. So for example, let's say we've set a site that's maximum width is 1400 pixels. There's no real reason to be uploaded images bigger than that. So we'll set our maximum width to be 1400. Now, any image that's uploaded that's bigger than that will be resized proportionally, so it won't get all distorted and look terrible, down to that 1400 by whatever the proportional value is. This just means then that you benefit in two ways. One, your image is going to be natively smaller, therefore the file size to start off with is going to be smaller, and then when they're compressed, you're going to get a bigger saving again. This is pretty useful. I'm going to leave the maximum height, that's perfectly fine. I'm not going to worry about the next option, I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm not using Cloudflare, but if you find a problem, you may want to check that option. We'll hit Save Changes to commit those, and then we're going to move on. So now we can choose the thumbnail sizes you want to process. Whenever you upload an image into WordPress, it'll have the original image, what you uploaded it as, and then it'll create multiple different thumbnail sizes, which you can see here. You can specify if you want to optimize all of those, and generally I would say you probably do, so I'm going to leave those values set as they are. If you want to make changes, you absolutely can do. Then you've got your exclude folders. So you may have folders on your WordPress website that you don't want to have any kind of compression applied to the files inside the, the images inside there. So you can simply find those in the file structure, click the little plus, that'll add it over to the exclusion on the right hand side, and then any images inside there will not be processed by Compress X. If you want to remove that, simply click the little minus and it gets rid of it. Then underneath, we've got the custom folders, and this is kind of the opposite way. So now if you've got specific folders that it wouldn't by default compress, you can add those folders in and include them in that compression. So for example, let's expand this themes one, and let's say we wanted to choose the theme 2025, we click, click the plus, and that folder will then be added. So any images inside there would then be compressed, whereas natively they probably wouldn't be. To get rid of it, again, we click on the little minus and boom, it's gone. And then the final one you've got is you can force all images to be reprocessed. Pretty self-explanatory what it means, and we're not going to worry about that right now. The final thing we've got is the delete images generated by Compress X. Say, for example, you want to remove the plugin, or you just want to start again. You've been testing a few things out, and you just want to start with a fresh slate. You can type delete inside there, and then all of the compressed WebP and or AVIF files that have been created will be removed, and all of the original source images will be put back. So all those uncompressed images will be available, and all of the compressed versions from CompressX will be gone. Pretty cool. And then you can install the plugin if you want to, or just start from scratch with a completely clean slate. Okay, so we've got those basics all set up.
The final thing we've got here is the start bulk processing, which we'll do in a moment. And you can see we've got this force all images to be reprocessed. So this is fundamentally the same as what we saw down below. I'm not worried about that, but if you want to reprocess all the images, you absolutely can do. We're going to say start bulk processing. And now any images that is already uploaded, they will now go through the process of finding them, compressing them, and doing everything we've done based upon the settings we've configured, and then we'll have those compressed versions. And as you can see, 100% of images are outputted to WebP in our example. So now let's close this down, and let's go and take a look at our media library. And if we take a look at our media library, we see we've got this new compress X column, which gives us information about the original file size, the compressed file size, and so on. So the original size here, as you can see, was 350 kilobytes, roughly. We've saved 23.63% by converting it to a WebP. And if we'd done the AVIF as well, it would tell us what size we'd saved there. So you can see we've saved between 23% and nearly 50% in file size just by simply running that plugin. Pretty nifty. Now, because we set it to automatically convert images when we upload them, let's upload a really big image and see what happens. I'm going to use this one, which is just under three megabytes, and we're going to click open. That will upload it, and now Compress X in the background will compress that and compress any of the thumbnails and things that are created by WordPress. And now if we go back into our library, take a look at our new image and the Compress X column. As you can see, the original started out as 2.67 megabytes. The WebP version is 108 kilobytes. We've saved 96.01%. So we made it 96% smaller. If we click on the image itself, it doesn't really look any difference in quality, which is perfectly fine for what we are doing. So as you can see, Compress X is a very, very simple plugin to set up and install. And basically, once you set it, you forget it, and then all your images will be compressed in the background when new content is added into your media library. I think it's really, really useful. And like I say, if you're handing off to a client, and from a personal experience, I've had this numerous times. They don't really understand in general the difference between uploading a 500 kilobyte image to a five megabyte image. They just look like images. They'll upload them. This will handle the compression, the resizing, and everything else behind the scenes. And then we don't have to worry about it when their website starts to slow down. They phone us up and they're moaning about their site being way too slow and it's all our fault. Web designers out there, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, all applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.